Connective tissues are the most widely abundant and distributed tissue in the body. Connective tissue is everywhere. It's under your skin, it composes your bones, your tendons, most of your organs. Connective tissue is everywhere. What does it do? Well, as its name implies, it connects, it binds different body tissues together. It supports the body and its tissues and organs, and it provides protection. Hopefully you did the reading prior to watching the screencast. So what are some examples of connective tissues or organs that are composed primarily of connective tissues? When I asked that question, did you think of any of these? Bone is composed primarily of connective tissue, as is cartilage, tendons, which connect muscles to bone, is composed of connective tissue, as are ligaments, which connect one bone to another, and blood. Blood is a connective tissue. When you think about blood, it's like the ultimate connector, right? It connects all your organs to one another. It allows transport of substances from all the cells of the body to the lungs or um, the kidneys, etc. So, let's talk about distinguishing characteristics. With epithelial tissue, the distinguishing characteristics were free space and cells tightly compacted. In thinking about the distinguishing characteristics, let's look at three examples of connective tissue. Here on the left, we have, do you know what kind of tissue this is? If you said bone, you are correct. What about this tissue? If you said cartilage, you are correct. And what about this one? If you said blood, you are correct. So what in the world, in terms of distinguishing characteristics, does bone, cartilage, and blood have in common from a strictly physical characteristic point of view? Not much, right? So here's bone. It's hard. It su supports weight without sagging. You have cartilage, which is not as hard and rigid as bone, but has some rigidity to it. And then you have blood, right? Blood is a fluid tissue. So what do all three have in common? If you said they are cells dispersed in an extracellular matrix, you are correct. And what do I mean by that? Well, in epithelial tissue, you had cells tightly packed together. There was very little space between them. I said epithelial cells were like apartments, right? There's not space between apartments or homes in an urban environment, very small yards, right? Connective tissue are like exactly the opposite. They're like houses in uh, the country or in a rural setting. You've got lots of space between cells and in that space you have extra cellular matrix. Simply substances that are outside of the cell. Let's look at bone here, right? Do you know where the actual bone cells are? Do you see these little dark spots here, like here and here and here and here? Those are actually spaces and they're called lacuna. They appear black even though they're spaces because light doesn't penetrate through. And, each, and in each of those spaces, we have the actual bone cells, which are called osteocytes. So everything outside of these little dark spots here 
is extracellular matrix. So most of the volume of bone tissue is not actually cell, it's extracellular matrix. And that extracellular matrix is composed primarily of calcium phosphate salts. Let's look at this purplish tissue here, this cartilage. Again, all of this purple out here is outside of the cells, extracellular matrix. These little white spaces here, these are the lacuna, just like the lacuna of the bone tissue. And then in the middle of the lacuna, we have the matatas. We have the cartilage cells, which we call chondrocytes. Site means cell, chondro means cartilage. Chondrocytes. And all of this out here is extracellular matrix. What about blood? This is a white blood cell, probably a neutrophil. These are red blood cells. And this little guy right here is a platelet. All of this white space is extracellular matrix. Do we know what, do you know what we call extracellular matrix of blood? I'll give you a hint. When people need money, they'll sometimes sell this. Plasma, that's correct. Plasma is the extracellular matrix of blood. That's the distinguishing characteristics of connective tissues. You don't have cells packed tightly together. Rather, you have cells dispersed in an extracellular matrix. I like to sort of think of fruit cocktail in jello. The jello would be like the extracellular matrix, and the little pieces of fruit would be like the cells. In terms of giving you a method by which you can identify specific connective tissues, really you just have to see them over and over and over again and start to pick up on what they look like. You'll, you can see by this slide they all look very different. One strategy that you can use is when you first see an example of each connective tissue, whatever pops into your head, write it down because whatever pops into your head will always pop into your head. For example, when I first started teaching this course, I knew nothing of tissues. I had to teach myself tissues. When I first looked at bone, I thought about clear cut forest because these structures called osteons look like tree rings. Even today when I look at them, I think clear cut forest, I keep waiting for the Lorax to jump out and say, did you cut down that tree? Cartilage to me looks like little eyes looking back at me, peering into my soul. Blood I had seen from grad school, so I sort of knew what it looked like. Down here at the bottom left, this is areolar. Uh, you've got lots of fibers. Um, I think of uh, old, mother, old Mother Hubbard eating curds and whey. Uh, don't ask me why, but that's just what popped into my head. Other people say, hey, it looks like a spider's web. Again, whatever pops into your head, write it down. If, if it looks like, that's what grandma looks like when she gets up in the morning, right? Then write that down. Areola tissue looks like grandma in the morning. I'm scared, right? Uh, fat to me looks like bubbles and dense connective tissue is wavy. And that's what I remember. Again, I am not saying use these specific um, characteristics. That's what works for me. So that's what I use. Come up with whatever speaks to you, whatever helps you remember the names of these tissues. But what I know works is seeing these tissues over and over and over again, your brain will begin to pick up on distinguishing characteristics and remember them. Also, I want you to note that in addition to knowing where these tissues are found in the body and being able to identify them under the microscope or from an image of the tissue under the microscope, for specific tissues, you will also be required to identify certain structures or cells. What you are required for each 
tissue is listed on your study guide. So for example, for blood, you will have to be able to identify this as a white blood cell, this is a red blood cell, this is a platelet, and this as the plasma. Okay? Refer to your study guide so that you know what you're responsible for. Lastly, I want to emphasize that although there are three different cartilages that you will find in your lab manual, you will only have to identify hyaline cartilage. You will not have to identify fibrocartilage and you will not have to identify elastic cartilage.